Hello everybody, Chris Schmidt from Rocket Lasso and I just got a tech support question that I thought would make for a nice little video. The basic question is, can we create a camera inside a cinema and make it automatically focus on what it's looking at? And that would be using Ricochet and we totally can do that. So to begin with, I've got a plane and a landscape, both in the connect object. We'll see why in a bit. I make a camera, I will link to that camera and make sure in your viewport you have the depth of field turned on so we can see the depth of field in the viewport. Moving into the physical tab, I'll make this really extreme, like 0.1, so we can super tell that the depth of field is turned on in the viewport. Now, what do we want to focus on? Well, I can click on, like, what does it want to focus on? We can click a particular point here, and I can click one time to focus on that. But if we want that to constantly update depending on what we're looking at, let's, um, actually, before we go too far, it might be nice to, I'm going to go to my asset browser, and I've installed the Happy Toolbox collection. So I'll just grab a nice low-poly tree. I don't even need the subdivisions there. Throw that into a cloner, clone that onto an object. I'll put that onto the connect object so it will clone onto both surfaces. Don't align the clone. Let's crank up the count, make a whole bunch of these, and I'll make them multi-instant so it runs really quick. I will do no more than that. It just gives us a slightly better look there. I want to use Ricochet. How would I go about doing that? Well, let's de-link from the camera for a moment and create a extensions Ricochet. Now, Ricochet, if you're not familiar, this is a plugin made by Rocket Lasso. If I pull this away, you'll see that there is a line shooting out from this axis. That line will continue traveling as far as I set this length. But if we feed it some geometry, either, either by dropping it as a child or making this objects tab available and dragging something in remotely, you'll now see that if this line strikes any part of the surface, it will bounce off of it. So we get a nice line bouncing around. I can do a lot more than that, but I'm going to change the mode of this instead of being the total length, I'll set it to count. So now it is going to attempt to bounce that many times and only if it actually bounces off of something will it actually even create the line. So if I set that count to one, then it's always only going to create a single line right there. And that line will terminate as soon as it is colliding with a piece of geometry. So having done that, I can make that a child of the camera, zero out its position. So turn on your coordinates here, click reset transform. And you'll see that there's now a line traveling from our camera and stopping exactly on this mountain. And just to show you, if I were to rotate the camera further down, you can see the ricochet line just instantly terminates right there. So we now have a line that is giving us an exact position at the endpoint. We need to be able to focus on that endpoint. The easiest way to do that would be make a null and let's just call this um, geo right clicking on that I will add a rigging tag and a constraint tag actually not constraint let's add a even easier I can add a animation align to spline tag the spline will be the ricochet and the null will suddenly jump to the camera if we shift the position to 100% this null is always going to be on the end of the ricochet line moving back inside of our camera let's go to its POV you'll see that we are not focused properly on what we're looking at because we need to move into the camera and drag into the focus object this geo null. Dragging that in, instantly you can see our focus has shifted to where I'm looking. But there's a problem. If I were to start moving my camera around, you'll see that the focus didn't update properly. Now, if I actually click on the null, you'll suddenly see it does update. The reason that's happening is most tags have a setting if you go to the basic tab, and right now it's set up as just an icon and it's this little camera. What that means is it will update if you physically move your camera in the viewport. So essentially when something's dependent on the camera, you should turn this setting on right there. Now that I've turned that on, I can just start moving around the scene and let's go up to this mountaintop. And you'll see that that's perfectly in focus. And as soon as I move off the mountaintop, the focus is going to shift over to that ground plane instantly jumping over to it. So, you know, that's the basic version of this rig working very, very well. If we wanted to, we could add additional geometry. That's why I made this connect object. I could make a copy of that landscape, move this to some other location, maybe change the seed on that one to be a little bit different. Get a nice looking one, that'll work. And we are continuing to focus and any objects that we throw into the connect will automatically be seen by the ricochet, meaning I'm still free to zoom way up and now the focal point is going to be up on this mountaintop. And if I shift off, it'll focus over here. And if I shift up to this mountain, it'll focus on that. So all that's working great. I want to add one last extra detail in here that I thought was neat. If we duplicate 
well, what do I want to do? It's instantly shifting our focus from this mountain over to the ground, but you could make that be a more dynamic process by, let me rotate to a nice angle so we can very clearly see it. Also, this when you move your camera, I'm holding down Alt as I click my middle mouse button, you'll get this nice little arrow in the center and that's the dead center point on your screen. So you always know exactly what we're going to be focusing on. So having done that, I don't want that to instantly shift from the front to the back. I want there to be a transition period. We can do that by making another null. I'll just duplicate this one, rename it to chase. And what do I want that to do? Well, I'll add a rigging constraint tag and I want it to be a spring type. So I'll turn that on. Moving into the spring tab, I want it to be chasing what? Well, I want to chase this geometry null. That's always going to be perfectly where the target is. So dropping that inside, it is now snapping over to it. Make sure, very important, make sure your length is set to zero. When you drag in something that's not in the same position, that length will automatically adapt to how far apart that they are, but that will properly set it to be linked directly. This is going to be constantly updating this null to, let me even see if I can show you here. If I delink from the camera, if I select this geometry null, I'll temporarily delete that tag. If I move this geometry null around, we've got this other null that's going to be trying to chase it around. Let me make it very visual. I'll change this to be a circle and make it way bigger. So you see, I've got that little circle right there. So if I grab this null and start moving it, you see that other one is chasing us around, but it's not perfectly there. If I move really slowly, it's gonna catch up. You'll even see that it will overshoot where I drag sometimes. So it's a spring tag. I will now update, or undo rather, a bunch of times. And now I've brought back our align the spline tag. Clicking on our spring tag, a couple settings we can change. If we add some drag in there, now it is not going to be springing back and forth. It drains the energy out. And if we set the stiffness to different settings, we'll get a different look. Moving back into our camera, let's make sure that the camera is looking not at this geo null, but this chase null. And I think, oh, before I forget, I almost did. On the spring null, also go to your basic tab and make sure that this is camera dependent. That means it will calculate if the camera moves or rotates. Having done that, all I have to do is start moving my camera around. And now when my focus shifts, you see that there's a transition between the two. It's not instant anymore. Moving back into the spring tag, let's make this really extreme. I'll drop this down to one, well, let's do 2%. And now as I transition, you see it takes a while before the camera slowly transitions from one shape to the other. If we want to crank it up and make it take way less time, we can say 50%. And now that will very quickly shift between the two, but not instant. So a way that you can start layering up parts of this rig to automatically focus on wherever the center of your camera is. And always keep in mind, you can add additional objects in and those will also be added to that collection. So yeah, just a little tutorial about a neat way of using Ricochet. Hopefully that helps somebody and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.